This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by We Use Coins. All right, I'm standing here with Nick from Nashua, uh, who you've got something to rant about, but I haven't even asked you what it is yet. You're, oh, by the way, Nashua, the most underrated town in New Hampshire. I completely agree. In my mind. Well, city, uh, place, <laughs> whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Right. But anyway, uh, love Nashua. But anyway, uh, what, what was on your mind? Well, um, I mean, I didn't have anything specific on my mind, but if you bring up Nashua, I mean, that, that, is, that should be one thing I should talk about. Um, Nashua is one of the places I feel really should have a lot more people. Uh, me, uh, my friend Jack Shimmick, um, we're trying to build um, a less uh, politically driven, sort of, like a, sort of like a simple disobedience keen, but less, um, less into getting arrested, more into building the new society within the shell of the old. A little bit more like an agorism. Yeah, more, more of into, uh, agorism and stuff like that. Um, than, uh, you know, getting arrested and stuff like that. I mean, you know, that's for some people, but... Um, well, of course, a lot of people are already familiar with Jack Simic's work in creating the, um, the, the Alt, Alt Expo, Expo, which right. is now at least, what, five years old? Yeah, five um, years old, running so it's, strong there's still. definitely a track record there. Exactly, yeah. Um, I mean, Jack's uh, done an amazing job with Alt Expo. Um, I helped him co-organize uh, at Porkfest, actually, and did a lot of the announcements, did a little bit... I actually organized a few events myself with some friends, um, and uh, at, at last pork fest, um, and yeah, he, he and me are both trying to get more organizations around the Nashville area, uh, and so he's starting. To, he's trying to start up what he can. I'm trying to um, do what I can just to get back on my feet. Um, so I mean, that's you know, in Nashville, one of the big things about Nashville is that it's really close to uh, Boston, um, so it makes an easy transfer if you want to work down in Mass. Or you know, Nashua itself is pretty good for for jobs. Um, I uh, I use the website just to find jobs, and I always get constant updates about job opportunities. So well, now is your location that you're working on, or the, your your project that you're working on, is that the hackerspace that I was hearing about? Um, yeah, there, Jack Shimmick is working on a hackerspace. I'm not sure how public he's, he's making this, but it is located in Milford. Uh, it's called Tech Arts. Uh, and I think you can go to techarts.com and you can find it. Uh, what, what exactly is a tech uh, or a hackerspace? Uh, hackerspace is basically a group space where people get together and work on projects uh, that they might not have the, the capital or the resources for by themselves. But working with other people, they can get their projects done a lot more uh, efficiently, quickly. And the benefit is you're doing it with friends, too. Um, yeah. Tech arts isn't necessarily libertarian, but there are definitely libertarians in it. Um, and the hackerspace idea itself is just great. Um, is this related to that article in the Telegraph where they were trying to shut down this business the other day? Oh and, yeah, uh, I did hear about that. Is they it were the same business that were trying. No, to it, it's or? not the same. It's not the same business. Uh, this is a that was a different place. I don't remember where it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually in Nashville. Some people that were building things and they, oh, hey, you don't have all the right permits. Right, you can't right, engage in commerce right. without. The, yeah. Yeah, and I'm of course totally against that. I, I don't think. Uh, the state creates artificial barriers to entry when they when they have permits like this. Yeah, and then they gripe that there's not enough jobs. Exactly. Well, yeah, because you're not letting people hire. Exactly. Because you're not letting them build. Right. Exactly. And and that's uh, no, another thing me and Jack are really for is like people creating the, the new society within the shell of the old means yeah. that we have to go either around or through or under or whatever these these barriers to entry that the state erects right. so they can keep their their good buddies in the in the corporations you know above everybody else you know having privileges and stuff like that yeah well you're seeing you know right now I mean that was the perfect example of this this crackdown in Nashville on this perfectly nice business right. uh, just for being there and not having all the proper paperwork necessarily yeah um, you got the government doing that to people you got people that want to build things right how do these two come to an accommodation? What's the win-win solution these two can come to with one another? Well, uh, between the businesses and the government? Yeah, something that will benefit both sides. I think, what the government really wants, I think, and their agents really want, is a sense of control. I think they really want a sense of control. And I have a sneaking suspicion that because the hackerspace is an alternative sort of association, they're kind of cracking down on it because of that, because it's not the typical you know, business or anything like that. So I have my suspicions that maybe they're doing it because of that. But um, I don't know. I think and it was I, a hackerspace in Nashville. It was a hackerspace. I'm down? pretty sure it's in Nashville, but don't quote me. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't quote me on that. Um, I did only read the. I only. I read a few things of that what my friends were talking about, and I saw the headline. I didn't click on the article, um, but I, you know, I have no doubt it's true. Mm -hmm. um, a win-win situation, I think, 
would unfortunately be for the business to go along with this until they can find a better way. I don't think this organization is libertarian, so I doubt that they would even want to go around it. I think, unfortunately, the win-win situation is more of a win for government than a win for free people. But um, it, it's going to be a win-win in the case of government's getting a little bit more of the win, but at least your business is still around. Mm -hmm. So. Well, this is unique. Most of the time when I ask people, okay, what's the win-win solution? They say, it's for everybody to do what I, you know, my idea. You know, it's like everyone should do, you know, the government should give in. That's basically the only answer I seem to ever right. get. Yeah, well, so I appreciate something different. Yeah, uh, and I mean, I'm trying to be practical here. Um, mm -hmm. I know the government's not going to give in. They're not mm -hmm. going to just say, oh, well, you know, it's just our mistake. You know, we'll, we'll just let you go this one time. No, they're not going to do that. And I think it's, it's good to be practical. You know, it's difficult to have universal prescriptions about what should happen when reality doesn't usually work with you on that. Right. You know, well, if it, the government's thinking, they're not going to find these people so heavily that they go out of business, right? Right. That's the threat that this company can use. Well, are you sure you want one business to go away from Nashua and that to be the headline? Because right. Because you overdid it when you punished us, right? Exactly. So I think, um, I think maybe even a better compromise would be to, to make, the, um, to make the, the cost a little bit less, but the business would still pay for it. So that you know, it wouldn't affect the business too much, but the state would still get what they want. Yeah. So I mean, I am honestly thinking about a win-win and not just a win-win in the libertarian sense. Right. You know, just in the practical sense. Not that libertarianism isn't practical, but in this scenario, it's hard to see how the government couldn't get anything from it unless they yeah. shut down and they go in the black market or something. And but, again, they're not libertarian, so I don't think they're going to do that. You know, I've been relatively impressed with the. Um if it's at the Board of Aldermen or the City Council in Nashville, I don't know how they're structured, but the, the, the you know the elected city government in yeah. Nashville seems to be pretty accessible and pretty pretty responsive, um, in my experience. As, as an agorist, I can't say I've had too much experience. Yeah, so, yeah. I can't say I'm really looking out to but see. But you could where they always are. put a little pressure on them. Well, hey, why are you trying to? Why are your Why are your bureaucrats trying to kick businesses out of Nashville? Yeah. Essentially, I mean, I think that'd be a worthwhile you know, cause for some libertarians yeah. to do, but not for me as an agorist. Yeah, know, it's, it's not exactly <laughs> good to say. You know, you know, I, I want you to treat these businesses better and then get under the limelight of, of government because you know. Yeah. Um, it's not really the uh, the agorist way for me. You know, right. some some agorists might be for it. You know, I, I'm not really. Yeah. I'm not really into you know well, begging. When me. they come for you, you got to use everything you've got that's peaceful to push back. Exactly. And that's yeah. one thing is going to city hall and and uh, and using their system. Sure. And I think that's for some people. Yeah. Um, it's just not for me. I mean, I I certainly wouldn't discourage anyone, especially because I really like hacker spaces. So I certainly, especially in this case, wouldn't discourage anyone from going over to city hall and saying, you know, I'm really uh, I'm really excited about these things called hacker spaces. I don't want you guys to shut it down. It could be a good idea. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm not. I'm certainly not discouraging anyone from doing it but I'm saying for me personally I don't find I don't see myself walking up to City Hall and, right. and saying you know oh, please just you know let these guys go you know it, it's it's not demoralizing but it's like it's kind of like I don't really like begging people whether you know they can do one thing or another you know and it's just that I, I don't think politicians tend to be very responsive to people especially not your current day politicians yeah um, so that's just my opinion. Again, I certainly wouldn't discourage anyone if they if they have a good game plan. Like I, again, I don't, so I wouldn't do it. You know, it'd be like, I don't know, it'd be it'd be like uh, letting the the fox guard the the, the chicken head or whatever yeah. or the, uh, chicken house. Um, I, I don't, you know, I wouldn't discourage it because they probably have a game plan. They know what they're going to say. You know, they have a can-do attitude. They'll come up and shake your hand. You know, I don't have all that stuff really. You know, and I'm not really looking to to do that. So. So All just right. personal preference. Well, Nick, I appreciate your time and sure. thoughts, and welcome to the action. Thanks. Bitcoins, the world's first practical internet cash. A nightmare for governments to try and control. Inflation and counterfeit resistant. They return you some control over your money. And a new measure of anonymity. A lot cheaper to use than PayPal. You can use them to buy tax-free cigarettes and almost anything else. I accept Bitcoins. So can you. Get started at WeUseCoins.com